we welcome your questions. But whilst the uh, speakers are speaking, if you can just put them in the chat box, um, then we'll address them at the end. That's fantastic. All right, sit back and enjoy. Over to you, Angela. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. A very, very warm welcome this morning to our site manager career chat. Um, I've actually moved around to my third room in the house this morning. I'm in the nursery, so if some random weird toy goes off and, and makes kind of strange noises, then just, just persevere. It only lasts a minute. Um, we've got three brilliant speakers this morning, um, and we've been supported by a fourth. So we do have Tony Lamb from, you may, may recognise him from, from Bovis Homes. So he's four years in industry now, he came through the assistant site supervisor, um, program um, and is now with Bovis. So a really, really fascinating journey for him. And I've spoken a lot about that particular journey. So that will be of real interest to you to hear from him. We're also joined by Kier and we're delighted to have three speakers from them this morning. So Andrew Ash um, is an ex-military, but he's got a fantastic story. So he, he joined as a labourer and has now progressed his way up to project manager. So there's just a lot of lessons there that we can learn. So really interested to hear his story. We've got Kevin Dwyer, um, who joined here as a site manager, um, transitioned over to health and safety role. So again, he's he's doing exactly what a lot of us talk about. So we put our best foot forward, start off in one career and then progress to another. And then we're going to be supported on the call today by Kate Ellis. So she's going to discuss just how she supports the ex-military community, the work experience, the, the fabulous lessons and the, 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 the work she does with the supply chain as well. OK, so I will kick off with our first speaker. So Tony Lamb, if you're there, if you come online um, and we'll hear your journey first. Or I can keep speaking. OK, so we need to unmute you, Tony, and then put your there camera back on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you hear me now, yeah? Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't see you. Cool. So hi, guys and girls. My name's Tony Lamb. I'm a site manager for Bovis Homes, which is part of Bistry Group now, which is Linden's and Bovis and um, Bistry Partnerships. Um, basically, I'm just going to go through my transition, where I started right through from settlement to where we are now. Um, so initially, during my resettlement period, I was more invested in the health and safety side initially. So I invested into doing the knee boshes and done all those. It was only about six months down the line where I thought, oh, this looks interesting because a few other guys were going for these sort of roles, um, the trainee assistant, assistant site manager role. So I looked into it and then I started looking into that a bit more. Um, with regards to courses to get in, and I'll go on to that in a bit, but with the trainee assistant roles, a lot of companies will put you through the courses needed to, to do the job, if that makes sense. Um, in terms of applying for jobs, I would say the right, I started about two months from termination leave or about four months, three months from your, your, your final end date to start applying for jobs. Before then, I'd say it's probably too early. Um, I'd say that's about the right sort of time. Um, advice as well, I would say just, just apply for any sort of jobs, even if you don't think you're going to get the job it's probably worth applying for it um if you do get through the interview stage just treat it as practice if anything i um i applied for three well, quite a few health and safety advisor jobs i went to three in the end um one with tran um one for a chemical plant as a health and safety manager which I actually got through to the second interview stage um and another one which was through a networking event which is where I first met Angela. Um, it was at a lend -Lease day in 2015 in Stratford in London. Um, I got talking to a HR rep from a company called Burn Brothers there. And a week later, they called me back to London for a, an interview for a health and safety advisor. So these sort of things do work. These networking events, LinkedIn, they do work. So that's another bit of advice is to go to, obviously I know at the moment it's difficult with, with what's happening in the world, but any sort of careers events, any careers fairs, online fairs, CTP events, they're all worthwhile. Um, and they can all lead to, to opportunities. Um, on the house building side of things, I basically just emailed really most house builders, most big house builders, um, rang up the companies, got for got got a contact, an email address, whether it was an MD, a contracts manager. Um, I had an interview with Taylor Wimpy in Southampton, where I live in Trowbridge in North Wiltshire. The, the location was a bit difficult. Um, and then eventually David Wilson Homes, Southwest, I got a phone call from them, but that was also through. Um, a CTP event I went to in Southampton in October 
Um, I overheard two guys at lunch. It's probably a bit necky of me, but I overheard two guys in, during their lunch break chatting away. Um, and I called the guy at the end and said, look, I'm, I'm interested in getting into health and safety construction. Can you give me any pointers? Um, we had a good chat. He took my CV. And then I think two weeks later, I got a phone call from the construction director at David Wilson Home Southwest in Bristol asking me to come in for a chat. Um, initially, the offer was a labourer for three months until March 2016 when their um, ex-military forces scheme kicked off. And that was the first one. Barrett's has now done about four, I believe. And that was going to be the first one. So I, um, I thought obviously thought about it, had a good chat with the wife, and then we went for it. I started with them in December 2015 um, as a labourer. Um, things changed quite quickly because the X forces scheme got pushed to the right. It went back to September of six, 2016. So I got called back into the office. They instead put me on the Barrett Academy, which is another training scheme, but more for experienced assistant site managers. Um, so yeah, I did like a, two days as a labourer, then got put on as a training assistant. And then from in then I did sort of the um, the academy. The Barrett Academy is very similar to what most house builders are doing now with the X-Forces schemes, apart from the X-Forces scheme is just X-Forces. But it's predominantly on-site learning. You get embedded with a, a team on site, um, and that's the majority. That's probably 80% of the learning, really. Um, and then some structured days away where you learn about communication skills, time management, how to talk to people, dealing with situations, all the sort of stuff that you've done in the military anyway, which is sort of second nature to you. And that's what you do. At the same time, they'll probably enroll you onto an MVQ level four in construction site supervision. Um, and that will get you a gold card once you've completed that. Um, the Barrett one, I don't know about the other builders, the Bovis, Mystery, Lindens, et cetera. But I know the Barrett one, it culminates in two days at a the simulation center in Coventry University, which is really interesting. Um, basically, they're just taking everything you've learned in that sort of 10 months since you've been in and what you've learned over the training days that they've done away as well. Um, and they put you under scenarios with actors um, and they're quite challenging. So, for instance, you'll be in the site office. Um, the forklift driver has crashed into the lady's car. The lady comes up and then starts giving you hassle about it. And it's how you control that situation. They chuck a reporter in as well and see how you manage that. It is, it's quite stressful, but it's, it's very interesting. Um, and it's a, a worthwhile exercise. Um, so previous experience, um, I, I didn't really have any previous experience. Um, my father was a bricklayer. Um, I think I spent one day on site with him carrying the brick hob back then. But because I was 11, I couldn't really carry much. Um, so there's no really need to have a lot of experience in this in this in this industry to be fair to start off with if they're taking you on as a trainee assistant they understand that you haven't got the experience um, so that, yeah th there's not there's no need for massive experience and you learn as you go on and I'm four years in now I'm, I'm running my site but I'm, I'm, I'm still learning every day it's one of those industries where you are going to learn every day there's always something that you'll be learning or need to know um, through that so yeah um did the uh, barrett academy with Bar barrett's after that i spent a further year at barrett's um so i did 10 months as a trainee assistant and then promoted to an assistant site manager um so i did two years in total at barrett's worked on a few sites uh, and then moved to bovis in december of 17. um i've been with them for two and a half years now with regards to progression, um, it's evident that you can you can start off at the bottom and, and work your way up. There's there that is there if you want it, um, and a bit of advice is to obviously show willing as well. Should, should tell them that you want it. When I first joined Bovis, um, I sort of made it clear that you know in a year's time I, I, I sort of would like to have the chance to run a site. Um, you have um, annual reviews as well, just like your rest jars, so you can sort of make it clear in there. This is what you want to do. These are the courses you want to go on. Um, I also asked to enroll onto my level six MVQ. They put me on that. Um, so that's my black card now in construction site um, management. But yeah. Um, um, yeah, so if, if you show willing that um, and there's an opportunity, um, they'll put you through it. Uh, a lot of builders, they've got faith in us. They, a lot of them are hiring ex-military guys now. 
um, and it because they're running programs for it, so it proves that there's 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 roles out there for us. Um, and and if you go and you'll get you'll get into it, it's, it's easy enough to get into. Once you're in, then it's, it's easy enough. Um, day in the life of a site. Just go through that for you guys if you're interested. Um, so day in the life of site. Generally, sort of, it's, it's sort of, it's long, long, longish days, but it's nothing that we're not used to in the military. So you're up early. I'd say you're probably on site for seven, half seven. I aim to get there for seven and sort of be the first one there. Um, initially, most importantly, put a kettle on and, and sort of check emails. Everyone else sort of arrives around about half seven. Um, use that time then to sort of brief the team, what you've got going on in the day, any, any cranes arriving, any services getting done customers moving in all that sort of stuff with house building obviously it's quite it's it's changing all the time where we are we're building we have people moving in so we need to accommodate for that as well so we've got to make sure that we keep reducing the fencing but still making the area safe so it's, it's always changing the the site layout is always adapting always changing so it's good discussions to have with your team about what's happening in the days from half seven till half eight I do sort of an initial site walk um Obviously, meet all the trades, see what's going on outside, what they're doing, any issues. Um, from half eight till nine, sort of back in the office, sorting out any issues which they have, and, and they always will. Printing off drawings, permits to dig, hot works permits, all that sort of stuff, getting them in place um, for the day's work. From nine till half nine, we, in, it's a bovis vestry thing, it's called DABS, which stands for Daily Activity Briefing. Uh, basically, all the on-site supervisors come in for a meeting. I'm not sure, obviously, when we go back to work that this is going to happen with, obviously, the social distance measures. Um, but prior to that, it's basically a quick half hour. They tell me how many men they've got on site, what they're doing, if they've got any issues. And that, right, it's a good thing because there and then you've got all the other on-site supervisors who can sort of um, discuss, well, if I need that from him, he needs that from you, all that sort of stuff. Uh, after that, so 9.20 to 10 o'clock, check materials, um, material cool-offs. It's a good thing to get into the habit of having stuff on site just in time, if that makes sense. So you don't want stuff on site too early because then it, it's got the potential to get damaged and ruined with weather. You want it on site in time for it to be used. So not that it's late, it's there a few days before, a week before, but not having it sat around on site for weeks at a time, month at a time, which I, you know, it does happen and you see it, you, you see it at times. From 10 to half 10 is generally a break. The whole site goes on a break. All the trades go on break. We tend to work through that, obviously, checking your email, stuff like that. Um, 11 to 1 o'clock is a site walk again. In this site walk, you'll be looking at quality inspection, stuff like that. Um, most builders now, is uh, quality is a big thing. So each plot has got its own quality plot log, uh, and each stage needs to be inspected for quality against various heads. Um, so that's one of the things we'll do. Depending on what days of the week as well, if this is a Monday, generally the health and safety inspections are into this as well. So scaffold inspection, plant inspection, um, excavation inspections, all that sort of stuff. After the, that second site walk, you have lunch, which is half an hour, one to half one. Um, half one to half two, um, depending on the day, sales meetings. So sales meetings are with the sales staff. and They are used to discuss upcoming move-ins, completions. The customer choices, that be tiles, flooring, kitchens, all the stuff that they're choosing. Um, and obviously you need that information to call that material off or order that material. Any defects which the customers have, we'll go through the defect tracker, where we think the customers are, whether they're happy, if they've got any issues which we need to sort out and jump on quickly. Um, and any access issues for future appointments. So if a customer's coming on site with the sales staff at the weekend to look at a plot, um, we need to make sure that it's obviously safe, accessible for them. No excavations open and stuff like that. Um, from three o'clock to five o'clock is the site walk again. So it's quite hard. You can't be out on site all the time. You've got other stuff to do. So I aim to best to sort of get out about three times a day. All right. During those sort of hours for the site walks. The last site walk of the day is obviously see what's happened today. Catch up with the trades again. Um, and then also inspect any work that have been put in for an NHB, NHBC inspection. The NHBC are sort of the builder control. So there's six key stages. They need to pass each of those key stages, but they can also come on now and look at interim stages as well. Um, 
without you calling them in. Um, so, yeah, if I've booked her an inspection the next day, I'll check it. That way, if there's any issues there, I can jump on the supervisor first thing in the morning to make sure that he gets that sorted before the NHPC get there and make sure it's right. Um, this time is also used for any home demos, normally completions. So if customers are moving in, they'll tend to complete in the afternoon. So this is welcome to the home. Home demos, which is a, it's called a home demonstration. It's a pretty simple thing, but it's just going around sort of showing them how the boiler works, how the appliances work, how the um, fuses work, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then from five o'clock to half five, it's basically just checking the site secure. Fences are secure, ladder guards are on, plots are locked, um, and then go home. I mean, this is sort of an ideal situation. But you'll find when you get into this industry, anything can sort of throw this up in the air um, with how you want to run your day. There might be some pressing which you need to go and attend to sooner rather than later, and then that just throws it out. But it's a very varied, um, it's, it's, it's sort of a regimented routine, but every day is different, if that makes sense. Um, you're never doing one you're not doing one thing the same which is which is why I sort of went down this route more than sort of the health and safety side in the end I think so I think the health and safety side we get sort of um, very similar month, but you know but yeah this is it's very varied um, and yeah that's sort of that's the day in the life site in terms of training courses the last thing now training courses so if you want to show willing and do some courses in the time you have before you go into this the ones that you'll be looking at are the SMSTS which is run by the CITB, that's the Site Manager Safety Training Schemes. This is the sort of, um, for most big companies, this is sort of mandatory um, to have. The other mandatory course really is your first aid at work, your three day first aid at work. Those are the sort of two um, big ones, which a lot of the big companies will have in place and, and the mandatory ones. Um, initially after that, a lot of the, the courses that the company have put me on are fire marshal, manual handling, scaffold inspection, cat and journey training, um, one that I, I've done earlier this year and I would recommend it highly is mental health first aid. Um, as we know, you know, well, you guys know, it's a big thing in the military nowadays as well. Um, and it's the same out in Civvy Street. I think construction is the highest rate for suicide as well, two a day currently. Um, so it's it's very good um, course to have and to do and to recognise those signs and just sort of increase your awareness of it. Um, it's a very good course to do. So those are the those are the sort of courses I've done. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much about it. To be fair, I can't really think of, of much else. Okay, Tony, listen, that was really good. Thank you so much for that. Um, a few questions have come in, so we'll pick those up um, afterwards. Um, yeah, cool, no we'll pass, yeah, we'll pass on to our next speaker. Is Andrew Ash online? You can unmute and take his camera off. Hello. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can't quite see you yet. There oh, you go. Yeah. My own. <laughs> it's probably on. best you don't see me. Got a face for radio. <laughs> um, ideal. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak uh, today. So. What my plan is um, just to go through, like I say, I am I'm a civvy. I'm not not ex services, but um, hopefully I'll be able to sort of explain my story of how I've got into construction. Um, so what my plan is, I'll, a quick introduction about myself, my current role um, and the job that I'm working on, my story, experiences of working with ex services, um, and then I'll give some um, and some of the frustrations and also some of the sort of the feedback of. Um, good things, things you might find frustrating coming into Civvy Street working construction from experiences um, within the military um, and hopefully that should sort of give it a bit of a my story and also a bit of a balanced view from the employer's side with all, with all the great skills that the ex-services can bring with them. So yeah that's that's my plan at the moment. So like I said my name's Andrew Ash, I'm 38 years old um, I've lived uh, and completed the majority of my construction career in the southwest. Um, I've worked on the Isles of Scilly uh, building a school and then I've got in Bridgewater and Cannington building a thousand year old or refurbishing um, a thousand year old building. Then I've worked on projects valuing from £100,000 through to £36 million um, and the total is about £155 million worth of work um, that I've been part of. 
I've been with Kia Construction is my current um, employer, and I've been with them for 13 years now. Um, and then previous to that, I was with two other employers for, for four years. So my total 17 years uh, of experience within the construction industry. Uh, I've built everything in my time now. The only thing I haven't really built is um, houses. I work in the sort of commercial sector, so I'm building hospitals, schools, all of those kind of buildings. So my current role is uh, with IKEA Construction as a project manager. I'm working in Exeter, building what's called a passive house leisure centre. So it's a German uh, technique of building, which is a heavily uh, insulated, highly efficient building. The beauty of it is a roughly a 70% reduction in energy usage. So we're building three swimming pools on the wet side, and then there's a dry side, which is a gym, spa, uh, and all those kind of things. That's the, the opportunities that construction gives to be able to build things like this is absolutely awesome. It's stuff that you wouldn't get normally opportunity to do world's first um, buildings, things like that, but the construction industry does give you that. So that's that's where we are at the moment. The project's 35 million pounds. We're currently working out what the COVID means. We've been, been working the whole way through the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. We've had to put controls in place. So what's quite interesting, it's just another form of actually working in management. So it might be the project management is actually running your site. The next time, the next thing we're managing is how we're going to deal with the COVID-19. So it's, it's it, that's the interesting part about the industry. It does keep it is very live and very exciting and things change all the time. So moving on to my story then, how I got into the industry. I went to university, uh, which I'll explain. I went to Loughborough University. I got a 2-1 in industrial design and technology, but that wasn't what got me into the industry. Um, I just it, it may have helped my me be who I am, but I don't think it was the actual end result of me getting into the industry. So finished university. Uh, my dad's got a farm, so I worked on my farm for a bit and then I thought, right, best go out and actually see what the real world looks like, not just work on a farm. So I went to the agencies and said, right, I fancy a job in construction and I fancy being a project manager. And they went, great, what experience have you got? And I said, well, I haven't got any experience. I've worked on my dad's farm. I've done a bit of delivery work, all those kind of things. And they said, well, okay, that's great, but you need, you need some experience. And I was like, well, I said, how do I get that? So they said, look, we'll try and get your job in the industry. So I was like, okay, fine. Um, prior to that, they offered me a few other jobs that weren't in the industry just to get me some get me some work. I didn't really fancy that fancy those jobs. They eventually came up with a job for me, which was being administrative cover, so photocopying and filing for holiday cover for four days. And I was like, right, I need the money. That's a way into the industry. Okay, it's completely not the role I wanted going in as a, a site administrator, but. I'm, I'm getting in there. So I went in to do, do the job, met the team, worked with the team. So I had, um, yeah, four days covering site, just doing photocopying and filing. But it did give me an opportunity to meet the team and then come across of um, personality, hopes and dreams, all those kind of ideas, talk about the people that were there and say like, oh, I like your job. What do you do? How do you do that? So it kind of got me in there, got my face um, into, the, into that, in, that one particular job. And then the four days finished, I finished that. And then I got a call a week later saying, would you like to come back as a labourer? So I was like, yeah, not a problem at all. I'd definitely come back as a labourer. Um, again, it's money, it was active, it was, it was a manual role, quite liked it. Um, I could do stuff, see stuff achieved in the day because you had to set tasks and things. So brilliant, went back as a labourer. And then I was there working and, and it was just you sort of doing the jobs and doing them well and then going to the manager and asking for another job to do and then using a bit of initiative and doing something and, and, and tidying something up I saw needed to be done. Um, and then they saw something in me, hopefully, I think, I think. And then throughout the next 18 months, I went from the site administrator to the site labourer to a finishing foreman to an assistant site manager. So by showing some interest, asking questions, getting involved, looking at what needs to be done, not just being told what to do all the time, showed a bit of difference. And that kind of moved me through the management structure there. So that was, I was with them for two years. I left them and then moved into uh, another, another company as an assistant site manager. And then again, did exactly the same process, took stuff on, listened, learned, moved through to the site manager. And that's how it's kind of, for me, that's how I've moved through the industry. And when, as soon as I got into the into that, because they met me as an site administrator, met me as a person, that got you in. 
and when I am when I'm employing people for my for the construction firms, a lot of this is, is 90% is can is what's the person like? Have they got the right attitude? Are they the right? Have they got the right mindset? The can do attitude, the positive. Can I work with them? That's more a, a lot of the things. The qualifications are all great, but everything in construction can be taught. We're managers. And that's that's our skill. We're just managing people. We've got specialists that come in and do the job for us. Um, and we just manage the process. We make all the we get all the pieces and make all the make them all fit and then make them work. It's not a question. I don't need to know everything about every single part on site because then you become a specialist on that one area. I'm we're managing the project. So all the skills that you've gained through the time in the services are so transferable um, into the industry because you are managing people. Um, so that's kind of my story and how I actually got got to where I am now, really. So it's kind of hopefully it's it mirrors kind of a process you could you could follow um so moving on to sort of experiences of um on site with sort of ex services and things like that so for me i've had a pleasure of working with a number of ex servicemen throughout my career um which has been absolutely fantastic i love hearing all this, this sort of what stories i can hear about um and all the sort of the frustrations and things coming across into into city streets um and what's good with this industry, it's really open for people moving in uh, at any stage of careers into construction because um, it is about the person that comes across. OK, so uh, um, like Tony was saying, there is certain um, qualifications that tick the box to allow you to be able to do work. But the majority of it is actually the person you're dealing with. Um, so, I mean, examples are, I mean, to, on the project I've got, I've got a chap that's actually um, sort of mid thirties, he's moved across from a working as a, in a, a marquee company, building, installing marquees. He joined the industry because he wanted to move across as a labourer again, and then he went as a gateman, and then he went as a forklift driver, um, and now he's on site with us as an assistant site manager. So it's that can-do attitude, showing you want you've got you want progression, you want to get in, and you don't mind working your way through because there is the work you can work your way through in this industry quite 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 well, really. Um, so my last job um, was as a large job in Plymouth, uh, 23 storey building, so 85 metres high. Um, and lucky enough, we actually managed to, we had three ex-servicemen um, employed on that job. One will be Kevin O'Dwyer, who you'll hear from later. And then there's two other, other lads that are currently, they've actually moved on from Keir to other construction firms. So it was a really good um, stepping stone from them. But they they felt there's so many transferable skills that you're you're working in a team generally quite a small team um you're looking to try and achieve a goal so on this one we're building a, a like i say a leisure center so that's our goal we're working towards um and it's it's all about getting people on side and working with you part, uh, and, and creating that team um and also you've got it can be stressful there's a lot of work but the stresses that i think again talking as a civvy to get right the stresses you've been through previously are nothing to what you working with construction sites do you know what i mean here we, we, we it's so process controlled and we can say stop anytime and make all the activities stop whereas i think sometimes in obviously in the situation you may have come from it wouldn't be like that um so moving on to um sort of where we are with some feedback i think was probably quite useful so Talk about all the good sort of the good things you've done previously and the transferable skills you've got. But some of the frustrations that I found that people ex services coming across was that civilians don't comply. So you're asking them to do something, someone tidy up or clean up, and they just don't do it. And that was really really frustrating for some of the some of the lads I worked with previously. Um, I don't think as an industry we're very good at giving feedback. So a lot of the lads have felt that you know give me some more feedback. How am I doing? What's happening? But we aren't very good with with giving that as much as um, as maybe you had previously. Um, progression, there is progression there, but it is not as fast as maybe it can be in the military. So I think you just have to sort of stick with it, keep working, and you can then um, progress through. Then the other thing for me is we talk about site management, project management, all those kind of obvious roles. But within the industry, there's a lot of other roles. So facade management so the outside of the building so you know all the, the grenville business the, the grenville and the facade on the outside there's someone on our site here that's managing three million pounds worth of just the outside of the building so within 
get into site management, but then you can see there's lots and lots of other roles of managers that are sort of specialist in the concrete frame or the groundworks. So there's then niches within the industry to look into. Um, and then my final point would be the, the biggest one thing I've always quest, had chatted through was risk perception. So my sort of risk perception would be someone stood on top of a box a meter off the ground that could possibly fill off, fall off. But risk perception, I think, for X services would be sort of calling an airstrike in when you're 20 meters away from where you're actually calling the airstrike in. So that for me was one of the biggest transitions was to get understand that to make to get the risk perception um, aligned with what we do on a construction site. So hopefully that's given you a sort of an idea of um, where my story and a few sort of bits with working with with X services. Thank you. Andrew, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, again, a thousand and one questions just kind of at the top of my head as well. So we'll pick them up afterwards, but we'll hand over to Kevin O'Dwyer, who you referenced. Kevin, if you're able to unmute and put your camera on. Camera's on. Um, unmuted. Uh, morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll just give a, so my name's Kevin O'Dwyer. I'll just give a brief history of what, um, what I've done. And, um, from beginning right up to present day where I've, I've moved across from site manager over to the dark side of health and safety. Um, uh, so I'll just kick off with that. So I started off uh, in the late eighties doing as a laborer site. Uh, I then moved into a bricklaying role. So I've done my apprenticeship, got my fancy new fields in the fields and worked right up in the early nineties due to the recession. And so I joined the army. Uh, joined the Royal Engineers as a primarily a bricklayer, uh, along as a combat engineer, so soldier first. Um, 24 years in, um, after doing 14 years, I would say, for the, the bricklaying construction side of it, partly was uh, also a uh, bricklayer instructor, captain. Um, done that for just over a year. With that, well, gained qualifications from them. And my A1 assessor, uh, and also petals, parents, and each of my three. Um, moved from there, and then I went into the EOD side of it, so the bulk disposal side of it, but obviously, certain is not going to go on the point. Um, done that for 10 years, and then at the latter part of my career, the last four years, I was at uh, Devon's Crane and Ridge. It's good for me there because I could start planning what I wanted to do when I left. So I had a great boss who gave me as much time as I could uh, needed to go away and meet my um, settlement. I had a good long think um, about what I wanted to do, and I thought I would go straight out into the construction world to be a health and safety advisor. So done all the courses, deep wash. So I thought, right, this doesn't work. I need to fall back on something. So I've done my SMSTS, uh, first aid course, first aid instructor. So I've done coaching, coaching and mentoring, level five, diploma. Uh, all that at the, uh, the uh, training regiment. All, all what I thought, you know, the good news when I get out. So final few weeks, I started to have a bit of a panic. And started building up um, all people, you know, getting linked up with people on LinkedIn, building as many people up on that as possible. Um, got my CV and so my cover letter, got that promote, started sending out, sent over a hundred, um, hundred of those out to people in City Street. Um, uh, I think we only got to place back to me. Had a few. Interviews, but the interviews are great because you can then build up the rapport and know how to use that interview for yourself. Try and get as much feedback from that as possible. Um, and just, just using the, you know, the forces, um, the resettlement forces, getting in the back. Pretty good. That helped me with the CV. 
Uh, on leaving, I did have a job, so I did have an interview where I gained a job, but I didn't want to do it because it basically be an SMS. Yes, instructor, if you're away from home, it's just that the courses, I didn't want to be away from home. So, be at home. So I, I just kept that on the back burner just in case, but and then I sent out a cover letter uh, thinking, and from that, uh, I sent it out, so I think, here, Chris Cook, he's our uh, you know, area manager, he, he sent the CV off to our operations director, and then got me the interview where I had the interview and so leaving the army three weeks later started work as a site manager of Beckley Court which is a 23 story building. Um, when I went into that job a bit naive didn't know what's going on you know and, but to get the coaching and mentoring side from, from the project manager there Andrew Ash was really good he helped me through, talk through what we needed to do, how the running of the site was going, any of the standards I need to look at the standards. So I was there as the site manager looking after the health and safety side of it and also logistics of the moving them up the floor right up to the you know, very top. I've done that for uh, 15 years. In that, I gained quite a lot of experience uh, team up there. Brilliant, I worked with Andrew. He did help me through the uh, transition period. Got to help the guys on site. It's all about the what you learn in courses, being able to talk, talking to them, how you like to talk back. Just using that, gaining the confidence, speaking to the guys, finding out about how, how things work. How to do that safely. Um, and then got the, um, the opportunity then to move across, as I said earlier, to the dark side. Um, and I'll make the health and safety. Um, within that, though, going from that cross, I can then use those skills I've learned from the site to help them. Moving around the site. I don't get bored because. Every day I'm on a different site, going around, looking at different things. Things. Making the bread, brilliant. And uh, as long as we fill our card uh, up, we can be uh, other sites. Great. Moving in, you know, from military to civilian work, it really wasn't hard to do with such a big transition to learning and that really started to work. Just being able to get out there, push yourself forward. Using um, so yeah, it's that thing for me. Don't don't give up. Don't just keep thinking that you're going to get to the next level. I did at first think you know, you know, hundred CV sent out back and forth. Even if you've got to start lower down, like I did, like managing the whole. I pushed up to help the safety where I wanted to be. Gaining that experience, that's the main thing for me. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for that. Um, and I'll just I'll just quickly summarise just a lot of some of your key points. Um, if you just keep me right, you said to um, use the resettlement courses. You said um, to get as much feedback from interviews as possible. Um, you said talk to people, um, how you like to be spoken to was your advice. Yes. You said get out and push yourself, um, don't give up, which I thought was a, a kind of fantastic theme there. And it is a case of if you just need to take that step or two back to kickstart your career, you are learning, it's not done in vain, and then no. your career will flow from there. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 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 Perfect. Really okay, so we'll hand over to your colleague. Um, Ellis, if you're there, Kate Ellis. If you unmute and put your camera on. 
So I unmute um, would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, thanks um, to everyone for taking the time to um, join the meeting today. I uh, really hope it's um, useful. Um, I work with Kevin and with Andrew Ash, um, and I look after uh, corporate responsibility. So um, a diff different sides of construction. Um, but the the point of this is that I get heavily involved with employment skills and trying to give people opportunities to join the industry. Um, one of the challenges we currently have, um, despite COVID, just putting that to one side for a minute, is um, actually recruitment and finding good people. Um, so a few years back, um, I started uh, looking at putting together our own MOD career transition programme um, for the reasons that both Kevin and Andrew have mentioned is that the fact that this industry is a really good um, industry for ex services personnel. Um, it's problem solving, it's managing people, um, every day is different. Um, it's not just sat in office um, and it is really interesting work. And I think one of the things I personally love about construction um, is the level of camaraderie. You really are working as part of a team and you've got your own little site team, but then for us at Keir, we, you know, we've got the wider team as well. Um, so you're kind of part of a um, bigger picture, which is great. So it, it's a really, it is a good industry to get into. Um, one of the recent, um, two of the recent jobs I've been working on, uh, which have just been absolutely awesome, and we had the pleasure of um, working with the army um, on both of them, is the new Bristol um, Nightingale Hospital, um, which we uh, finished in 20 days. Um, from well, yeah, start to finish 20 days. Um, you might have seen some uh, the media coverage about that, and um, that provides a 300 bed um, hospital facility that uh, ironically the point of it is I hope that it will never actually get um, used but to have oh sugar uh, sorry um, to have everyone pulling together to turn that thing around in 20 days was just absolutely awesome and really shows what can be done um, and the same in Swansea um, Swansea is a 1300 bed uh, field hospital it's a building within a building um, we hardly had any brief on it very limited information it was kind of like get your team together get started on site get on with it and that that is the side which I hope would be appealing um, for a lot of you guys um, and something that I think you could probably really excel at so I'm um, looking at quite a few of the questions you've asked people have asked about the training schemes um, that we have on offer and what sort of future opportunities are so in terms of um, the future opportunities um, at the moment and I'm going to be totally honest with you um, it's a it's a difficult time with COVID we've seen a lot of stuff um, furloughed but what has happened is that Despite a few weeks back, I was all questioning whether or not we would actually be able to continue to keep our sites operational. Um, we've managed to do that, fortunately. We've done it safely. We've worked within all of the, the guidelines. What we actually did was we closed our sites for two days and people like Kevin and Andrew and all of our teams got together and looked at, OK, these are the rules. We've got to work within the two metre distance. We've got to look at all the cleaning and all the other elements you would expect. Um, how can we do this? How can we keep this project going with limited people in sight? How can we make sure that people are safe? We needed to give our subcontractors the option not to, to come in. You can't, you can't force people to do it. You don't know what their home personal circumstances are. Um, and we've only actually got, so of all of our sites in Western Wales, so I look after Wales down to um, Cornwall and everything in between, We've only actually, and I think we've just got two sites close at the moment. One of them is just because it really is impossible to work within um, the limitations. And as Andrew alluded to, what we've had to do on all of our current sites, we've had to look at how we manage the welfare facilities. That has really dictated how many people we can have on site. So Andrew's putting in marquees um, and Kevin will oversee making sure that we're doing it all properly and that we can um, still keep it moving but within those sort of parameters. 
Um, so yeah, time, times is hard at the moment. However, we are keeping going. And what has actually happened because we have continued to bid for work and we have good client relationships, we are still seeing work coming through. So somebody asked about South Wales. Yeah, Wales is busy. Um, we're just starting a 50 million pound school up there, Fitzalan School. Um, we, the health sector is now really starting to see a lot of work come through. So fingers crossed, we're hoping to, well, we just started enabling works in Taunton at Musgrove Hospital. That's a 60 million pound scheme. Um, and we are starting works uh, at the Royal Cornwall Hospital in Trelisk. Um not to mention the sites that are continuing to work. So what I think is going to happen, and we don't, nobody knows exactly how this is going to look. Um, we're fairly certain looking at the pipeline of work coming through and because the government is still trying to obviously um, stimulate the economy and a lot of the money that's been allocated for, this is all capital funding. So a lot of the, that capital funding has already been allocated. So public sector schemes, which make up probably about 80% of our work, um, will continue. Um, there may be delays, which is inevitable, just because it's going to take longer for projects to come to fruition. But it does mean if all those schemes go ahead, when COVID um, slows down and we get to a point where we're, we're able to manage it even more and get more people on site, um, there will be demand um, for to find people. Now, I'm, we've got lots of people on this call, and I guess a lot of you have got varying different um, degrees of experience. Some of you may have got some construction experience or skills in specific areas related to this. But as Kevin and um, Tony and Andrew all said, you, you do not have to have those specific skills it, um, to enter the industry. The nice thing about it, um, and I'm not military, um, but I do recognise the importance of um, the progression and rank and moving up. And it's very, very similar. So you can come in and say an assistant site manager, become a site manager, progress to be a project manager, become a contracts manager, maybe become a director. And it is quite a set pathway. So I think that's just something to bear in mind as well. Um, and just on that point, Kate, what would the salary bands be for each of those roles? I, can I get back to you on that? What I'll do is I'll get uh, my HR manager has probably got a proper sort of ranking. I probably would okay. need to get that. I mean, I know um, initially, and I think this is probably hard because I imagine probably you're on quite, you know, good salaries. And I do think that it, that can be a potential barrier because if you're starting as an assistant site manager you may it's likely that you are going to be going in a lower salary than you uh, currently are however I would say you can the demand for good site management is there and you can progress relatively quickly I you know if you feel quite well driven um, but I'll get that actual specific information I think it's in bandwidth so it'll be you know from x to y uh i'll get that for you to send out to everyone so hopefully that helps thank you um just the only other point i just want to get across in terms of um stepping stone into the industry um andrew ash and i um a few years ago ran at beckley court a uh, mod uh, career transition program we did a one day open day where we had some people came to site and just learn about the different roles. I'd very much like to run that again. Um, but we also, off the back of that, people that were interested, we then offered them two week work experience placements. And we also do a six month work experience placement as well. We don't have so many of those to offer, but the two week one is really, really good because we just say come to site and we get you looking at lots of different roles because site management covers so many different things as Andrew alluded to um, and just to see what areas you may well be interested in. Now we run that program across the whole of Western Wales at the moment obviously I can't get people to site um, but it doesn't mean that we can if people have got an interest in that in the future we can look to start matching people with sites where there may be those opportunities coming up and that work experience program is such a 
bloody good stepping stone because you need to get in there and get to know people and then it'll be like the project managers and the other site managers will say do you know this guy's really really good um and you, that relationship is the best way to get your foot in the door and also for you to understand what the job role is because I found when I came into the industry everyone's very technical and I was like what on earth are you talking about and they'll be going m and this and QS that and whatever and I was like and they do talk in these abbreviations I'm sure you lot are probably a bit tougher than me and able to say stop what are you talking about I didn't and I was just like oh yeah <laughs> um now I'm a bit older I don't mind saying I don't understand but um it by being on site you can visualize better what what they're talking about and, and the whole process um I hope that's helpful I don't know it's the... very helpful it really is you know thank you for that there's um quite a few questions that are targeted at you at Kier, so we'll maybe connect you to some of the the candidates in terms of just a few of the wider questions oh, yeah. you... sorry hi it's Caroline just, hi I've just had a few messages just for those that don't have there's a lot, I should have said this at the beginning and I forgot to say it. There's a left hand side of the chat bubble there, or if you hold your cover, your cast in the middle of the screen, you'll see a little panel come across and there's a chat box there. Just click on that and write your question. Sorry, over to you, Angela. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> okay, is um, Tony, we've just got a few minutes left with you. If you could just answer a few questions, if you're able to come back online. Yep. So are you aware if Bovis Bistra are recruiting at the moment? I think at the moment with obviously COVID, we're not actively recruiting. Um, however, I can always, um, I'm able to send CVs off or onto, you know, people where there obviously will be some, some, you know, roles, opportunities yeah. going, but not what was like before. Um, they do run their X Forces scheme. I think it's every September. I'm not sure if that's going ahead, but I expect, like we spoke to earlier, um, I forwarded a CV onto the talent director last week, and he's going to forward that on to someone else in Bistry Partnership. So, you know, there's there's opportunity still, but not as much as there has been before at the moment. That is at the moment. No, that's it. And some of the key themes that you mentioned um, were attending industry days. You mentioned the importance of those. Um, you mentioned being open to any opportunities that come up, being prepared to yeah. upskill. So in terms of the upskilling piece, what would you advise um, kind of fellow colleagues to use their learning credits on? What courses would be suitable if they're looking to, to come down the site management route? I think the main ones are... Um your SMSTS, your first aid at work, um, mental health first aid I found is a very good one. I think, you know, that's a good thing to have. The knee washes, although they're not necessarily, you know, they're not um, imperative, I found they are important because they give you more of a, um, when you get on site, you sort of recognise things and spot those hazards, which, like Andrew was saying, we as military wouldn't see as a hazard, like, you know, some brickies standing on, um, some blocks supported by a plank of wood but that's a big thing like you know because we've slipped mm -hmm. strips and falls so those sort of things you jump on straight away so the knee boshes i would say probably i wouldn't necessarily do all of them unless you're going down the health and safety route but the general knee bosh general is a good course to have it gives you a good understanding of health and safety um it delves quite into construction as well um so that's a good what good one to have but yeah the first day that will work the smsts but um like i said if 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 you can get in with a company as a training assistant They'll put you onto those courses anyway. Okay, we've had a question from Angus Miguel in terms of when should you start looking as you're going through your transition? What advice would you give him? I think I sort of when I signed off in um, January 2015, um, sort of, you know, the, the back end of the six months, I think I started applying for jobs about four months from the, my, my very end date, which was New Year's Day 2016. That was my final day in the, in the army. And I went on termination leave in November mm -hmm. so around about sort of two months from termination leave maybe three months depending on your situation and what you're doing um, is when I would say to start applying for jobs I know I don't know about nowadays um, but I know at the time um, some regiments had had, had sort of their, their command officer had, sort of was okay with if um, 
if someone's got a job opportunity, there was the possibility okay. of letting them go on termination leave sooner. I don't know if that still stands. I know my regiment didn't do that. It did at one point. It didn't when I was going for it. Um, so I don't know what the situation is at the moment, but that, there is an opportunity for that to happen. OK, and a question to both you and Kevin O'Dwyer, if he's able to come back online. In terms of some of your colleagues that are looking to pursue trade roles, what advice would you give them? Hi, Kevin. Hi. Um, trade role. Oh, yeah, I, it's it's more so now. I think it's a subcontractors, you know, so I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, try and speak to them as soon as you can. Uh, try and get some experience, you know, even in your uh, holiday, try and get on site and see what, you know, what you, what you want to do. Um, I would, you know, that's probably the best way. Uh, use up some holiday time, get out there. Um, it depends on what, what uh, part of the, the military you're in. I mean, when I, when I was in the Royal Engineers, we'd done, you know, some construction throughout the, the time I was in there. So mm -hmm. I could throw that out if I needed to. OK, and um, I think Caroline had asked a question there on behalf of Martin Walters, um, who's interested in the 360 operator role. Any advice that you could give him? Just as a starting point, where to look to first? Uh, I think that's your, you've got to look at um, on your uh, resettlement, doing your courses on that, what, what you know, what you need, uh, how you build up. Because you're going to have to start off, someone's going to have to watch you on site to get your uh, your cards. So, yeah, I, I would say speak to someone, you know, close to home. Um, get on LinkedIn. That was the biggest thing for me was LinkedIn. Get on there, speak to people on there. You know, people who are in that that line of work, and then uh, seeing what you know, what qualifications and how they got about it. Really. I was I was just going to add to what Kevin said there. Yeah. Um. For instance, with the three hundred and sixty role, LinkedIn's a huge. It's a massive tool. Um. With that, get on LinkedIn, find out what ground worker, civil engineering firms are in your area. Um, and, and make phone calls and start making connections and then they can give you the information of what you need, what qualifications you need with regards to, you know, 360 operators. Um, and same with the trade side as well. Get on, see what your local subcontractors are in the area, carpenters, electricians, all that sort of stuff. Get speaking to them and they'll they'll probably, they'll be willing to give you the information of where to start and how, and how to get into it. Okay, and I don't know if Andrew Ash is able to come online as well, but somebody's asked the interesting question of a degree. What about going down the construction management degree route? Do you think it's an industry that would um, support that? Or do you think it's much more pragmatic and practical? I think Andrew had to shoot off to a meeting. OK, thanks. Um, but yeah, with regards to the degree programmes, um, we do a clear um, degree um, where we put people through. Um, I think I can't remember how much time they spent. Um, actually on site but it's a yeah it's kind of like um placement and you know you have the full degree program and then after that you do the postgraduate um and graduate placements i guess tony probably they probably have similar there but um most construction companies support um degree development programs they do they do and we do it like this as well so it's a day release program it tends to be a day a week um, where you're at university and then the other four days you're actually working and earning a full-time salary. Um, a couple of the universities do it differently. They can do blocks of four weeks at university and then months back in industry. So um, it's to try and accommodate how flexible you need to be because um, you are undertaking a full-time role as well. So the universities try and work around that. But it is another way um, to gain access to construction having left the military. So we'll be in touch with you and we'll just help you with that question. Um, we're getting quite a few questions coming through, just asking us to link people for opportunities. Um, if Caroline will get back in touch with you afterwards um, and we'll be able to do that. I think sometimes it's recommending we put you in touch with as many people as possible just to see which opportunities come into fruition first and quickest, especially during this pandemic. Um, thank you all for your questions. I think the majority of them we have answered. If Tony, Kevin or Kate has any other closing questions or if anybody else listening has any other questions, then more than welcome to Sorry. come online now. I yeah. have a question 
from um, Joe Reese rather than my saying the title. Um, he's having difficulties accessing the chat box. So I think we have covered it, but just in case um, either Keir or Bovis have any additions, he's just wondering what opportunities you may have for the future in the South East or Kent area. From the from the Bovis Vistry side of things, um, we have got there's a region down there. So you've got Vistry, I think it's southeast. You've also got Vistry partnerships, which a lot of it is predominantly in London, um, which is the more sort of commercial side of things. Um, as I said, at the moment, I don't know what opportunities are out there. There will be some, but the best thing is obviously um, speak to uh, best thing Caroline probably speak to Roger Morton about those sort of things or. Um, like with Danny last week, I can, you know, get the CV sent yeah. over and then that can go to the right person in that area as such. Yeah, thanks, Tony. I have just messaged um, Joe saying that I will get in touch with yourselves and also um, I've got another guy, um, home builder as well, possibly. So that's fine. Thank you. Kate? Um, yeah, we've got, uh, there will be opportunities, um, I, I suspect. I, I don't cover that area, but I'll be able to pass on um, inquiries to my team up there there's a um somebody who does equivalent to me up there so i'll have a chat with them and see what there is that's great thank you kate okay so just to just to close there thank you so much to our speakers to tony andrew kevin and kate that was really really useful um we'll make connections and help the candidates that have come online so by all means keep sending your questions through um, we'll do what we typically do at build force and, and try and bend over backwards to best support you and connect you um, especially during these times. Again, key themes from the speakers today were just stay assertive, um, have confidence in your people's skills and all your transferable skills. Um, and I think probably Kevin's point of get out there and push yourself and don't give up, I think are probably just a, a great way to, to close this session. So thank you again to the speakers and thank you to everybody for dialing in. Um, we've got a few more sessions in the diary yet, so I think our next one's in, in two weeks, um, either quantity surveying or logistics. Um, but again, we'll keep running these and we'll keep introducing you to new speakers so that you can keep learning lots um, through this lockdown period. OK. Would it be possible to ask a question? Uh, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Uh I'm having trouble with this chat room thing. I can't get anything either. It's Trevor Williams here. Hi, Trevor. I thought I recognised the voice. <laughs> Hi, Angela. You're right. Yeah, I'm I still well, haven't thank you. those photos, have I? <laughs> um, I'm a little bit worried about, uh, well, going back to, uh, I think it was uh, Kate's, something that Kate mentioned. I mean, how is employment going to be after COVID-19? because you're going to have many experienced people available now, people that have already been site managers and project managers. And so for someone breaking in, is it going to make it more difficult? I mean. That's a good question. I'm happy to, very happy to respond I'm to that. Um, um, <laughs> I think, Trevor, you, you don't need to worry about that. I Basically, the demand for people to move in to find good it's harder for us to find good site managers um than the, there are um than there was demand for people already out there because yeah it, it's always advantageous to have people with experience um but generally they're already probably working their way up the ranks anyway so they're probably mm. you know, heading up more towards a sort of project management um sort of level um i would very much reassure you that I think that you won't find competition from other people uh, a barrier. I think there is going to be a lot of openings. I mean, I know it's very difficult to say that we none of us really know how the world's going to look, but yeah. we we look at pipeline uh, we the rolling sort of three years. So our pipeline is still looking because the, the nature of construction, and everything, you know, it can take 10 years for a project to come to fruition. Um, so we, we know quite well in advance and we're working on tenders and pricing well in advance. So I, I don't think that that will be a, a major barrier. I think the key thing is just getting you to sites to meet people because they'll recognise the good. Mm. Should I maybe go at the lower level though to just get in there? I mean, you might. the other thing that. is I'm yeah. 57 now. <laughs> you know, so um, have you got... Yeah. Do you want to have a chat offline on this? Because um, I'd love to. 
yeah, I'd be very happy to do that. I don't Thank know you. How. Yeah. We Sorry, Trevor. I, I didn't know how to Trevor, get the chat room can, thing. <laughs> don't worry, Trevor. I can connect you to Kate. I've already made a note, so I can do that for you. Okay. Yeah. Would, Brilliant. Would, if we aim to do that this week, Trevor. Excellent. Thank you, Caroline. Oh, That's no you. problem. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, thank you everyone and we will um we'll see you in a few weeks at our next session. Okay, we'll Bye. close there. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, Angela. Cheers, Caroline. Thank you.